morning. So uh, uh, please uh, welcome to, to this, uh, to this uh, section about uh, forest management applications and really happy to see all the results people are uh, presenting here today. So when our session is branching out, exploring applications of uh, ET data in forested landscapes, and uh, today we will have uh, uh, pre presentations from Dr. G. Sun, Jamie Nettles, and Dr. Yung Yang. So uh, I would invite Dr. G. Sun to, to start uh, with uh, his presentation about forest evapotranspiration and some hero for underst understanding watershed functions and their response to dis disturbances. Uh, Dr. Gisson is supervisory research hydrologist and director of the Eastern Forest Environmental Treat Assessment Center, Southern Research Station, uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture Forest Service, and adjunct professor at North Carolina State University in Raleigh, North Carolina. His research focuses on effects of climate change, forest management, wildlife, wildland fires, and urbanization on water quantity and quality using Ediflux towers, paired watersheds, and integrated, integrated simulation models. He has published about 360 peer-reviewed papers on forest hydrology and uh, climate change. Please, uh, just uh, have your, take your time to, for your presentation. Yeah, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this session. I think I already learned a lot uh, you know, about this open ET. You know, that's what I do for forest. So uh, I'm with the Forest Service. Uh, I'm my office in North Carolina. As you can see, I'm in the eastern part. And uh, as Yun Yang mentioned, now the eco stress, all the open ET on the western part. But there's uh, emerging you know, work uh, for the east, hopefully, you know, my talk will be useful, really, to this community. You know, how do you validate um, um, ET uh, for the eastern part? Also, uh, I write that uh, excellent paper, and John, uh, you, you guys did an excellent job. You know, they were saying for natural system, there are uh, more arrows uh, than crop plant, which is really true. And uh, hopefully, uh, today, you know, my, my presentation will give some, shed some light to uh, that as well. Uh, uh, my talk is not uh, just on specific um, uh, topics. Really, I just a lot of uh, random thought. You know, why we care about evapotranspiration uh, in, in forest uh, community. So here is why. Who cares? You know about ET. You know there are so many. If you talk about the ET, you know they. Uh, uh, it's a it's a different meaning for different people. Really, for ecologists. You know, ET is a very important to for bi even biodiversity. You know, for crop plant, you care about the irrigation, right? I, you know, we I think people call the ET is a necessary evil, so, right? You know, uh, because it's a uh, for hydrologists. You know, well, I'm a hydrologist. I because that's a major component of the hydrologic cycle. Uh, you know, for forest hydrology, uh, we. Uh, we have controversy, uh, even in, uh, not, not sure you, you know about it, you know, how forest management affects uh, water yield. And that's, uh, uh, this trip is a debate over 100 years. So I think many of the controversy is, uh, you know, rooted in uh, evapotranspiration. We do not know, we do not have a good uh, number uh, for different age, you know, different species. Uh, so that caused some of the, the problem. And I have mentioned biodiversity. If you look at all the literature, uh, people talk about the biodiversity of tree species on a large, large scale. They relate to evapotranspiration. Or sometimes they relate to you know, potential evapotranspiration, like in New Mexico. There's a really high biodiversity because of hot. There's high potential evapotranspiration. Uh, those, that kind of uh, issues we, we care about as ecologists, you know, hydrologists, foresters. Uh, as I mentioned in this, uh, this document, very important document for, the, for our community was the relationship of forest and water. You know, in the past, people talk about forest and everything. If you have forest, you have good water, you have good watershed, right? But in the, in the 1990s, because of we want to reforestate and uh, we need timber, but forest use a lot of water. 
because of the higher evapotranspiration, so people, oh, you're going to dry up my river. Is that is uh, it's possible, right? If you are forest in an area with a grassland, like New Mexico, you put trees there, going to use more water, higher evapotranspiration, then you're going to dry up your river. So, but nowadays people realize, you know, they have multiple benefit of trees, and uh, so they are coming back. Uh, so they look at green water, blue water, and then now it's uh, you know called the rainbow water. We need to look at the local conditions. What the evapotranspiration at different locations, so we can design, you know, reforestation projects. Yeah, you know, thanks to all the Adiflex community, we, we, know, we know more, uh, we know better uh, of the evapotranspiration. You know, this only occurred since the 1990s, right? In the past, you know, 20, 30 years, we know lots of more about the evapotranspiration. You know, also we, we know the, the trade-offs, right? You want more carbon, then you're going to lose more water. So the evapotranspiration, the carbon sequestration, they were, they have trade-off. You know, look at this, uh, very good relationship between evapotranspiration and the carbon gain. So with that information, we could develop models uh, like this one, we call the Vasi model. We, we incorporate the evapotranspiration and we can bridge the two communities. One is the carbon community, also the hydrology community. We can look at the trade-offs and uh, we can use models to simulate uh, evapotranspiration with the carbon gain uh, carbon laws. Uh, so this is a big uh, uh, progress. You know, in the, in the Eastern U.S., we also, we are still synthesized. You know, even in the, in the Eastern U.S., we have over uh, 2,000 uh, flax towers. We all want to look at it with the evapotranspiration, you know, what the species difference going to cause, you know, uh, you know, what's the yield, uh, you know, impact. Uh, so, um, we are still synthesis this is in review. You know, if you're interested in the eastern part uh, for validation of open ET, you know, they, they are all available. Uh, also, you know, this recent paper is still in review. We look at species conversion, you know, from lobulali pine to longleaf pine. Which one gonna use more water? Would that save water for uh, forest forest uh, restoration? We found actually uh, it's true, with Adiflex data, we can see, you know, longleaf pine use less water uh, if you restore that ecosystem. With, uh, uh, this is uh, kind of, uh, we look at the Adiflex data, different towers, also we look at remote sensing. This will help with, uh, you know, Yun Yang uh, to, uh, using eco-stress data. Uh, we, we actually approve this to, to show uh, those two ecosystems, they do have different uh, energy balance, you know, they have different bourbon ratio, uh, and the long leaf, uh, they were, uh, the ET is lower. Uh, but it's harder, because you use less water, then your ET is lower, but the surface is actually harder in, in long leaf pine. Uh, again, when you put on the Boudicca curve, kind of, you can kind of see more clearly uh, the, the long leaf uh, the long leaf pie uh, ET ratio, uh, the water, uh, you know, E over P is lower than, than the Labolati. So this is from over, uh, over several thousand pairs we, using remote sensing uh, from EcoStress, we can look at the pair, right? They, you are next to each other. Which one is going to have higher ET based on the remote sensing? So those kind of information is very important, right? To, 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 to show, uh, to best back up all the e ecological restoration efforts uh, in the South, because in the Southern US, most of the long leaf pie ecosystem are already gone. They were, uh, they were all replaced by you know, very high productive you know, uh, lab lie. Uh, you know, those are kind of remote sensing, very advanced you know, technology to measure ET. But uh, in, in first community, actually, we have this called the paired watershed research in the past. Uh, I don't know if you, you heard about this, but that's our, uh, you know, uh, bread batter, you know, for forest hydro hydrology. We, we measure those uh, uh, ET differences, you know, basically using paired watershed. 
you know, we have calibration first, and then we go cut one forest, and then see the water yield differences. In reality, this is really the, the difference of evapotranspiration. If you, you think about this paired watershed uh, study, you know, this has been used, you know, around the world, you know, like uh, North America. You know, there are over 90 of these kind of sites uh, that can be used uh, to, to validate, right, the, the open ET uh, product. Uh, so uh, I think those those data, you know, they were they were measured. You know, they they, they were they have very good uh, uh, calibration uh, uh, to show you know which land cover, right, the clear cut versus the forest. Which one you you have a higher evapotranspiration? Uh, I think those data they were very useful. It's a like long term data. Uh, uh, you know, those, I just put some numbers there. You know, uh, if you remove forest, w the water yield uh, uh, increase. Basically, the uh, the evapotranspiration decrease number in like a you know dry area like Arizona, you know Beaver Creek, about twenty millimeter a year. You can you can uh, reduce evapotranspiration <coughs> compared to uh, without trees. But some area they can be four hundred millimeter like a uh, in, in North Carolina. So we have those kind of data. They were very valuable. You know, they're still going on, uh, you know, measure, measurements of, uh, you know, different species um, of, uh, of forest. Uh, we can provide that kind of uh, very detailed data on, on evapotranspiration. You know, for example, here is, uh, you know, I, I like this, you know, to, and this is in H.J. Andrews. If you clear cut a forest, right, you know how much water you can gain. You know, Steve is holding that uh, stick. Basically, that's how much. Uh, actually, you can gain, uh, you re reduce evapotranspiration by 500 millimeter. Or that can be even higher than your stream flow in a dry year. So forest basically use a lot of water, the evapotranspiration. You can, you know, that's three sticks, one is, uh, Dry year one is really wet year, so the blue bar is the uh, is the flow, and the the, the green one is the evapotranspiration. So you can see in the dry year, the ET even higher than than the than the runoff. Uh, with that paired watershed, we can also know the the uh, the monthly evapotranspiration. Uh, what the what the difference is between uh, a forest. Uh, forested and also a, a, a clear cut. In this case, it's clear cut. So you can see different season. Uh, this brown bar basically is how much ET you know reduced or what yield increased. Um, but different region like Oregon, you can see in the summer there are no flow, and so the difference is very small. But in the fall, there's a big difference. Uh, so. Uh, uh, certainly, water yield. This water yield again certainly is not a really difference of evapotranspiration, but with the evapotranspiration, we can better understand, you know, why some months there are no differences. You know, like a COVID in North Carolina in in May, there are no difference uh, in water yield. I think we can explain this by, you know, the differences in the summer, uh, and also water storage change to explain all this. We also have all those kind of data. This is in Piedmont, North Carolina. Every month, uh, the water yield, you know, is higher when you when you remove trees. I, this one is from Dr. Devendra Mata's site in Cairoide. Um, you know, some you know, you know, in the really uh, uh, peak growing season like July, there is uh, you know 30 millimeter of more water from the clear cut site because of it lower evapotranspiration. Uh, well, the, um, you know, those are monthly you know, uh, flow of differences we can explain by, by evapotranspiration. Also, uh, forest hydrology also care about the you know, uh, flooding. You know, with the, uh, remove forests going to uh, increase flooding. Uh, also, you know, different uh, kind of uh, hydrologic parameters. Uh, I think uh, this also relate to Evapotranspiration. You know, not a lot of people realize this, but if you look carefully, 
you know, uh, forest land, they can reduce flood because it's drier before the storm, because the soil moisture is, is lower. So with that, uh, evapotranspiration can explain this. I'm not going to go details, but uh, I think uh, that's what, what, uh, what I, I believe. You know, the in, uh, initial soil moisture content is very important to, to, for the benefit of uh, a forest. Certainly there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, unanswered question. You know, uh, forest mentioned, you know, forest in Brazil affect a lot of the downstream wind of uh, precipitation. Uh, that's really true, but it's really hard to, uh, to prove uh, without, you know, measurement. Uh, same, same thing here globally, you know, like in China. Look at that uh, science advanced paper. It's uh, saying China did a lot of reforestation, right? What was the impact to, to rainfall? Uh, it's uh, still in, in debate. Uh, so uh, uh, that's one of the questions, right? To, uh, we, we, we need to have better measurement, measurement of evapotranspiration. Okay, I still have, I think, a few minutes uh, left. I will talk about this, uh, uh, my, my recent work, you know, how forest uh, land uh, benefit the urban community. Because I have been doing this look at uh, what's the differences of water balance between a forest versus an urban. Uh, because it is a, a phenomena, right? You know, this kind of urban, I consider urban as the extreme of a forest disturbance. Uh, in the southeast, especially in the southeast, uh, you know, we have seen urbanization, uh, you know, flooding of the urban heat island, you know, what's the benefit of forest uh, for even urban dry, dry island. You know, we, when you clear trees, there will be less uh, evapotranspiration, the air will be drier. So uh, if you look at this EPA, you know, those cartoons, you know, when I look at this, they were saying 40% evapotranspiration of a natural system, I think uh, uh, I think this number is probably too low. Uh, for, uh, you know, for example, this in Florida, we can be 80% they, they were of precipitation is, uh, is evapotranspiration. So probably you underestimated, uh, I, I think I call the nature's power of evapotranspiration, pump the water to the air so you can reduce uh, flooding or inundation in urban area. So for that purpose, I, we just collected a 10 uh, paired watershed across the, the eastern US. You know, we look at the water balance, uh, you can see the, uh, uh, you know, here is the, the ET uh, of urban, is like this number, but, uh, you know, for far is much higher, right? Also with uh, uh, Gabriel Sinai provided me uh, the remote sensing, the Sibyl, uh, ET, they, they were close to, to the water balance calculation, which is really good. Uh, uh, so you can see the ET in forest condition is much higher, that why it's, uh, it's low, the, the precipitation, why the flow is lower. And uh, you know, with that regulation, I can explain the, the difference of evapotranspiration between urban and forest can be explained by two factors. One is the precipitation regime, also the impervious uh, surface. Also, I look at the, the monthly, uh, it's very interesting. You can see the flow is much higher in the urban area, but in winter, actually, they were similar. Uh, so this can be explained by, by evapotranspiration, also leaf area index. Uh, yeah, so this is just example, you know, we, uh, as I mentioned, you know, this forest can reduce flow, uh, flooding a lot because of evapotranspiration. Look at this. Hydrograph, they are very similar in winter, but in the, only in the summer, it's very low flow. So that's why there are you know, less flooding in the forest condition. Okay, so here are just uh, the, a few points I want to mention. You know, tree uses a lot of water to realize all the ecosystem surfaces. So we need a better number you know, for evapotranspiration to explain all the, all the benefit in you know, all the design of a nature-based solution. And ET is very important to, to do all this. Thank you. So, uh, so we have time for questions to Dr. Ju.
Any question? No? Uh, so, uh, okay, please. Okay. Yeah, depending on how tree you grow back, right? You know, right. like the southeast, they can go, you know, three, five years, they can go in back because they can increase leaf area index and then return to the original evapotranspiration. But in Rocky Mountain, they can go 50 years to return back. 50 years? Yeah, 50 years, the flow is still higher than, than clear cut. Even they, they grow back because they're, they're slow, right? With all the trees. Right. Yeah. yeah. But normally, you know, they return 10 years. Um, okay. in the, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, please. Uh, with, uh, that graph where you were showing the convergence of the, uh, was it the, the, rain, the rainfall versus the runoff difference? Yeah, the, the flooding, right? Yeah, is that is that just schematic, or do you, is that produced from data? Is it really cool to grab? Because uh, like you know, that each ecosystem might have quirks or different. This is, I think, the conceptual. Okay. You know, gotcha. yeah, you know, different the system. They 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 may have different, but the overall the idea is there. You know, if the before you have a storm coming, if it's drier, the soil is drier, you have bigger reservoir, because you have higher ET then you, you probably have a better benefit, okay. yeah. So that's the, in forest hydrology, we say forests can mitigate small and medium <laughs> of a flooding. But the, for my data, I think, you know, if it is urbanization, it can mitigate a large, large flood uh, with a hurricane. There are no, no response in some of the little watershed, even in hurricanes. Are you conducting uh, studies about uh, upwind and downwind effects of uh, land cover changes related to, to forest? I think there was a slide uh, that mentioned the uh, kid between uh, that one. Somebody else is doing that. <laughs> we are uh, doing very small watershed trying to from the process based in the yeah. study. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But uh, this question, you know, Dr. Ice is from. Jimmy is saying, you know, well, how they're asking this question, they were sued, somebody got sued by, uh, to court because of forest management, would that affect the inland, you know, uh, precipitation? Okay, yeah. interesting. Uh, okay, yeah. I have a citation on a recent thing about that I was talking about. Also, I would agree that we reference in another article she's been working on. Okay. Yeah, I think there is a question over there. I think, uh, well, uh, you know, philosophy is if previously there, there are trees, right? You, you should, there are no problem, you know, to plant trees. But if you plan to, uh, previously it's grass, you want to grow timber, then they can be a problem, like South Africa. I think it's a good example. Uh, with a grazing land, then you plant pine, you know, eucalyptus, uh, they, they can be a problem. Uh, for the U.S., I'm not uh, sure we, we have that problem, really, you know, there, because there are no huge reforestation, right? Uh, for previously already crop plant, then we plant trees uh, of uh, not a huge concern. Uh, but globally, certainly, you know, the science paper are all coming out, even last week, so they were talking about reforestation. It's not a simple fix. That means you can't plant trees everywhere. So, okay, thanks. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Jusen, for, for your presentation.